Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching Responsive Design Lesson 2 and in this video I'm just going to show you a quick example of a responsive site in action. Wow. Alright then guys, so I've scoured the internet for quite a while now and I came across what is quite possibly here the best responsive website on the planet. It is the netninja.co.uk and yes, it is my website. Um, and I'm going to use this website to show you how a responsive site looks on different device widths, okay? So how you see it here is how it looks on a desktop, full width. But if I right click and go to inspect, and by the way, I'm in Google here. This is a Google Chrome developer tools. Now I've done that, I have access to these little tools right here. Currently it's selected on the blue one here, which is the desktop icon, meaning I'm seeing the desktop view. But if I then click this little mobile icon, it's gonna show me a different view, which is in a device. And the device currently viewed is an iPad, all right? So it's gonna show me here what it looks like in an iPad. And this little circle right here, you can see this represents the finger on the iPad. So if I kind of scoot it up, that's like the, uh, the finger just swiping up, all right? So that's pretty cool. And this toggle button here just lets me see it in landscape mode as well as portrait. So that's cool. And we can select different devices here. So I could select iPhone 5 and see the same thing. All right, so that's how it looks like on, that's what it looks like rather, on a different device. But this list right here is exhaustive. It doesn't have every device listed. So what I tend to do is go to this desktop icon, uh, icon again. And then if I want to see a specific width, say I've got a device which is 1000 pixels in width. You see that number right there? That number is the current width of this viewport here, this little section, right? So I can drag this along until that number goes down to 1000 pixels, which is around about there, something like that. Doesn't have to be exact. And I can see what it looks like on a device of that width. All right, so that's pretty cool. I use this all the time when I'm checking responsive design. So I wanna show you just a couple of things. First thing is, if you watch as I make this smaller, you're gonna see at certain points, the website kind of clicks and a different design shows. So if you look here, count these, one, two, three, four, five, yeah? In a minute, the website is gonna click and it's gonna show four and the design is gonna be slightly different. Just watch this. Okay, there it is, right there. That there, my friends, is a breakpoint in a CSS. And that is controlled by a media query, which we're gonna talk about later. But essentially, we use breakpoints or media queries to control how the content looks at different device widths. Okay, so I'm saying right here, if you check out the width, I'm saying at about 1,260 pixels, right? I want you to show four, I want you to move this down a little bit, and various other things, just so it adapts to these screen sizes better, okay? So you'll notice there's a few breakpoints. That was the first one. There's the second. There's the third. And there's the fourth. Finally, there's the fifth. Okay, so there's a few breakpoints going on here, which are uh, being used to display the content differently on different size devices. The second thing I want to show you is the HTML. Now, the HTML stays exactly the same. If you check as I'm doing this, it stays exactly the same no matter what the screen size is. All right. So that's what I was saying before in the last tutorial, I said it's important to plan in advance uh, what uh, devices your website is gonna be viewed on because then you can plan your HTML accordingly. All right, so all I've done is change the CSS to display this HTML differently at different widths, all right? I've seen some people, some developers, what they will do is have a separate set of HTML for desktop, then a separate set for say tablets and mobiles. That is bonkers, never do that because A, you're taking up far too much time doing it, you know, twice as long. And secondly, it's gonna give every SEO agent, that's a search engine optimization agent, in the whole universe nightmares for the rest of their life because you've duplicated the content. And that is a really bad thing in the eyes of Google search engines and SEO agents. So don't do that, all right? You wanna keep your HTML all the same. Yeah, you might have one or two little things that are different and certain elements that show on mobiles but not desktop. But for the most part, you want to keep your HTML consistent across all devices and then just use the CSS and breakpoints and other tools to control the layout or the, uh, the visual aspect of it right here. Okay? So that is an example, a quick example of a responsive website in action. Um, I hope it sheds a little bit more light on why we need to do this and uh, how we're going to do it. In the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at the method in which we can approach this and how we start to make a website responsive. So uh, if you like these videos, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the very next one.